welcome to episode 16 of PTBO Canada Live. I'm Mike Judson, and uh, joining me as always is Neil Morton, Lord and King of PTBO Canada. Wow. wow. Now that is an endorsement, Michael John <laughs> Judson. Judson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a uh, commonly mispronounced yeah. uh, way to say my name. Judson, though. It's weird. Who would call me Judson? We were talking about that beforehand. So how how is it possible to get J-U-D-S-O-N and people call you Judson? I don't like know. it's always with the E. And I know. So yeah, it just does. Yeah, it just does. Yeah, and, uh, that's the way it works. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I, I get Neil Moron sometimes. Oh, that is. Perfect. You dropped the T, right? Yeah, Neil uh, Moron. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am a moron sometimes, but uh, yeah. yeah. So how are you, Michael? Um, you know what? I feel a lot better these days uh, with winter kind of coming to an end. Yeah. And, um, being outside every day this week and working on the on the backyard and just getting everything cleaned up and uh, I was rebuilding our pond. And um, where's your pond? Uh, I have a little pond in the backyard. It's like oh. kind of dug down, and there's got rocks all the way around it. So oh. I, but it's so old this pond. It was there when we bought it yeah. that I had to dig out all the rocks because they've been grown over uh, with soil and, uh, right. and grass. So then I dug them all out and restacked them, and then uh, we're gonna get the pond ready. Uh, How do you probably. get a pond in your backyard? Well, you just fill it with water, like oh, up. so it's it's a man-made pond. It's I'm like, okay, man-made yeah. pond. Man-made <laughs> okay. pond. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have the pond running, but uh, you know what? It's just with with the sunshine and spring, like my mood has gotten so much better. I have noticed that you're yeah. a lot chipper these days. Starting last week at the zoo, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the zoo was wasn't awesome. that great. That was cool. I, yeah. I, I think we we have to do more on location stuff. That's fun, like that. Yeah, like, for sure. We could go to the reptile zoo. Reptile zoo. It's always has to involve animals, right? Ju- the jungle cat world. Jungle or, cat world. We'll yeah. go to the Toronto Zoo. <laughs> the uh, the Bowmanville Zoo once brought a lion to to checks. I, I bet you we could play with a lion cub. They brought a lion in, onto the checks. I have a set? picture of me with a lion on the desk at Chex Daily wow. with, with me holding a lion. Wow. Did you have to sign like a waiver before that? No. No? It was <laughs> stupid. Nuts, it man. was a bad idea. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, it, but it was really cute and like yeah. the lion would like roll on its back and like get all crazy and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not touching this thing. Anymore. No, no way. No yeah. But um, I, I, I was saving this for you today. I, Uh-oh. Th- this is like a Mike Judson truth moment. I've never okay. done anything like this before. But um, uh, I'm going to admit, um, I stepped on the scale earlier this week and I am officially the fattest I've ever been. <laughs> really? 260 pounds. Really? Yeah. Well, you don't look it. I know. I hide it well. You do hide it well. And so so <laughs> you're confiding. So what does this mean? It means that I've set a challenge for myself. Okay. And I feel that... Um, uh, you can set personal challenges all the time and achieve them, and yeah. like that's if like you're a good, strong-willed person. I'm not, right? I set yeah. them, and then I just fall off the wagon, and then back into Cheeseburger Town. Uh, so this time, I'm going to set it as uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop down to 220 by August, by the end of August. So how are you gonna do that? Are we gonna start jogging together? Well, I, I, I do. You want I, me to be your trainer? I used to run all the time. Oh, you did? Yeah, and I, I used to be yeah. uh, well below 220. Yeah, in, in great shape when I was, uh, you know. Do you know what happens often. when Jen probably got pregnant? You probably put like. When Christy got pregnant with two kids, I, yeah. each time I put on fifteen to twenty pounds. This, this is what's happened. Yeah. So I, I have to, I have to snap out of it. So yeah. Well, I, it's spring now. Yeah. So you canoe a lot already. You do a lot of hiking. Yeah. Like you already have that side idea. Uh, I think you can still have the occasional beer. You might have to cut down a little bit. Uh, I, I hardly yeah. drink anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your best friend's here. He's yeah. like, he's pretty skinny. Well, he's just rail thin. He is like, he could probably drink and eat anything. I right. Think he's he's mal- one of. The, I have buddies nourished. Like, yeah. That's his problem. You know, he's getting, he's getting. Um, he's going to get chicken wings and nachos today. So right, and you swine. won't notice. No, no bloating. Well, I'm going to do it too because I'm not, I'm not ready to start now. Yeah, yeah. Start. So when do you start? Like, when's the day? This is like a 30, it's a, so like a 90 day challenge. Dude, it's like a lifestyle change. It's I, a lifestyle change. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run after work. So at 11 30 at night, I'm going to get home, grab the dogs, go for a run, 5K yep. at least every every night or every other day. Yep. And then mix it in with weights and uh, my punching bag in the in the garage. I think so, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. And I honestly don't, I don't notice. I know you've said to me in the past, you get comments on air. Yeah, oh, it's not no. just females that get. I mean, that stuff goes viral when they get called out on. You know, someone's pregnant, and you look terrible, and stuff like it. You get called out too on it, it and it's, it's not. It's, that's it's, not why you're doing this. No, no, you're not no. doing it because of that. I'm doing it because um, I was like playing with Tommy, and uh, just like mm. on my on my hands and knees while he was like on the ground with a baby, and I'm like, man, I'm really tired from doing.
being like a position for yep. my body being in a position. Yep. And I'm so tired. It's not contortionist and you're sweating, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't do this. Uh, my kid, I yep. gotta be able to run around and have fun with them. So. Cool, man. Well, everyone has to have that wake up call. And uh, I, I tipped it at 200 a few years ago and I've kept it back to 180 for a couple of years. It's not hard to do. I've almost got a hundred pounds on you. Yeah. You well, know, I would well, just man. Well, why don't you right hit now. that hundred pounds and then start? <laughs> <laughs> well, start, we'll do that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. But I'll absolutely, I'll, I'll train, train with you. And, uh, I'd like to learn boxing actually. Would you? Yeah. Oh, Remember no. I was in your garage a few weeks ago and I hit it once and I broke my hand. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, you, you, you were punching, uh, with these knuckles here. Yeah. Oh, kind of okay. There's I, specific. Yeah. I'll Cause I never you. was the fighter in school. I always had the big buddies, yeah, my bodyguards the, as they called them, my posse. Were you a loud mouth though? Oh yeah, totally. You'd go and instigate it. Oh, I was get totally your obnoxious. In. Yeah. See, I had buddies like that too, but I was one of the big guys. So they would go in and instigate it and then I had to go and uh, Oh, you had to be in there. Yeah. yeah. No, I was lucky. Yeah. That's funny. So, um, um, so yeah, that's what's going on with me. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah, everyone has these uh, TSN turning points or these moments, and yeah. uh, and you have to discover it for yourself. You can't have other people saying, "Michael, I think you should do this or that." And so, it's not that bad. Like yeah. I can still see little Mike. So yeah. as long as I can see him, I'm, I'm okay. Well, you moved well against the globe trotters. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, yeah. uh, that took all my being to do that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was like that was February, so that was like mid uh, winter depression for me. Yeah. It got much worse after that. Now I'm starting to come out of the light. Cool, so, man. Which is yeah. very nice. Cool. Yeah, well, I see it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, new. I feel like I have to have this big uh, <laughs> yeah. confessional with you now. I don't know what to say. <laughs> what, what, what would Neil? Uh, what could uh, Neil my do? teeth aren't white enough. Did you whiten them? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Here's okay. I, uh, I I might have dabbled in that in the past, but I haven't done it in a while, so they're feeling a little yellow. Oh, but okay. one of my friends tweeted at Crest White Strips, <laughs> and they said, "This dude, look at his teeth." So they they actually sent me three months free Shut of up. Crest White Strips. Yeah, so okay. I had to use them. So I've I've had like uh, I've I've never really dabbled with the whitening and being on TV. People are like, oh, you know, you should. And like, we have free dental or whatever, like, right. uh, through our. It's pretty union. good coverage, yeah. And so I went in there for some dental work. I, I had my first cavity earlier this year yeah. in my whole life. Yeah, and, I haven't uh, had any. And uh, I'm sitting there, good job, you're a liar. And, uh, <laughs> but so I'm sitting there and they're like, hey, you know, uh, you, your teeth are a little yellow. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, because I, I, I drink coffee and, uh, you know, smoke cigars. I, I, I don't care. They're like, well, you know, we can set you up with uh, a free whitening system. So they put this, like gel in my mouth and then like made these like composite looking yes. teeth things uh whatever and they gave me everything for free wow and they're like go whiten your teeth it's sitting up in my closet you're just staring at it looking yeah like because i feel like I you don't want to be that guy i don't want to well you, i feel like i'm a, like i'm being a phony i'm like look at me and my white teeth and my gleaming smile that i that i got well there is that pressure though in the tv world i right? don't care about the pressure in the tv yeah. world man <laughs> i i didn't shave for like a half of this week and yeah like someone's like oh my girl i'm like yeah shut up i don't care and that's uh, good if, if i could grow like a big bushy beard yeah. they won't allow me to do that right but that's what i do on my time off I yeah know. yeah totally but because uh, tv does breed narcissism a bit right like oh, and how could it not i'm totally a narcissist but just, yeah. in, different, just yeah. in different ways. Is he a narcissist? Your best friend? Yeah, big time. <laughs> this whole weekend was about me, 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 and my motorbike. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. it was. But yeah, my, yeah. My, my best friend Jamie came up to help me uh, put um, get my bike roadworthy. So he found this motorcycle for mm -hmm. me, and uh, I still don't have a license plate or any insurance uh, right. because I have to go through like the You're courses. doing the Fleming course, you said, yeah, in a few weeks. Yeah, I course. Uh, you know, I, I went and got my M1. So you're going to do donuts in the parking lot, right? No. <laughs> I'm, scared. I'm scared of this damn thing. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't know. It's like yeah. a little crotch horse. Just like, <laughs> brrr, takes off in the run. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to be very cautious. But yeah, he got it up and running. Uh, went out last night Went to, and had that smoked Manhattan over at uh, Spanky's. Yep. Yeah, and, I tried that too. Wonderful. Yeah. Yep. And uh, But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, Good, man. We got a good show today. We got Kemi, and what's her last name? Because um, you pronounce it right. A, a cat poo, I believe. <laughs> she's going to be, she's gonna totally tell you to edit that out. <laughs> Kemi Acapo's coming on the show. Kemi Acapo. And then we've got this great band, Television Road. Television um, Road, yeah. I saw them on Twitter a couple of years ago and uh, checked them out. And then um, when you had them, uh, when you booked them to come on, they have this album out on Bandcamp right now. And, right. Um, it's like it, it, I, I'm going to let them explain uh, yeah. or at least tell me what they are because uh, it's really really interesting music. and they're up for a CBC is it Searchlight? Are, are you guys doing Searchlight as well? yeah, yeah. 
All right, no, we're, we're not going to talk. Uh, about okay, we don't talk about CBC. <laughs> they, they won they, all those cutbacks. <laughs> well, the CBC, I mean, they, they, they just canned uh, another like 112 people, and they used the Gian Gameshi story to possibly uh, to, to cover that up. Yeah, they but, did. They timed it the same day. They timed it the yeah. same day. How do you do that? 112 people. It's a PR strategy. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess uh, they're, anyway. So, that uh, stuff doesn't happen in Peterborough. I shouldn't talk about this. No, anyway, no. I'm going to get myself. But involved. yeah, Kemi, Kemi will be great. Kemi is a Trent student. The band, Television Road, I'll go to Trent too. There's a big Trent connection today. Oh, Kemi wow. was at the UN recently. I have a Trent tie. You have a Trent tie. I didn't go. I've never been to school. And then um, uh, the chancellor came on on checks. Oh, yeah. And interviewed him. I was like, hey, that's a swell tie. So he ripped it off. And no, he, like, no <laughs> the next day showed up in the mail. And oh, really? He, he had a, a Trent tie delivered. That's so cool, man. At the Trent University tie. I, I so you feel like yet. you went to university now. Yeah. And that you're, you're highbrow and analytical. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I have a pair of glasses that I wear when I wear that tie as well. Yes, like the professor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. You're self-educated, right. and you could do it. I am. I am, I am self-educated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're you're well read. Right. Well, I could tell. And even today, we could tell all the research you've done for these interviews. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I didn't feed you any of it. No, nothing. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trying to take my credit. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, it's a it's a quote that I used to live by. Uh, Frank Zappa is like one of my heroes, and I had this magnet that sat in my fridge for years. And it was this quote that he made back in the '70s, and it was, um, "If you want to get laid, go to college." If you want an education, go to a library. Right. And uh, it's obviously not meant to be taken literal. Well, you did, though. But no, I didn't take <laughs> no, it literal. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get yeah. laid until I yeah. finally went to college. But no, um, it was. it's kind of a matter cool. of like, you know, like if you want to learn something and you want to do something, you can go out and do it without the help of anyone. Yeah. And that, was, that was totally frank in the way that yeah. he was and kind of the way I am. Too. Everyone gets there in different ways. Yeah. You got one last, I got, okay, so I left my house this week. I opened the front door. Yeah. And the mailman, my mailman, who I see a lot, he's just sitting on the bench, which is like one foot in front of my door. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, I know and that he, bench. That's awkward. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's awkward. Yeah. He's like, he's like, looks like totally busted. And I'm like, are you resting? He's like, I'm waiting for my cab. What? So my mailman, I guess I'm the end of his route. And I guess he does this every day. And I just don't notice that he's looking outside my door. But he said, I'm waiting for my cab. Don't mailmen like drive mail trucks? Well, that's what I thought. So I don't know. Something must have. But I found that awkward. I love awkward moments. So I appreciate it at the same time. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a mailman with a DUI or something. Well, that's what Christy said. Yeah. Right? And I didn't want to ask him that. Like, but uh, <laughs> if it happens again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I like a mailman, like a cab. Uh, it just seems that's bizarre yeah it seems bizarre door, like, I'm just waiting for my cab yeah like, yeah what are you doing you yeah know? anyway I just found that kind of creepy but at the same time I, I, I see a different side of it and then anyway Daryl Bennett then pulled up in his cab so oh, <laughs> no, I, 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 just, one, one last thing too <laughs> I'm getting um, I'm getting harassed by uh, by a lady online as well I keep sending me emails that uh, my clicker my weather clicker yeah is too loud it is I do I do notice you hear that it too? oh yeah okay I got a I problem. feel like it's from like the 70s <laughs> there's a problem then yeah I do I think to, you should go in and do Demand. I've demanded a new clicker already. A new clicker. And you know what they yeah. did? They're like, okay, we're sending you a new clicker. Yeah. Awesome stuff from uh, from like Madison, Wisconsin. Shows up, same clicker. Same clicker. Exact same clicker, <laughs> just a new version of Like, exact same one. So like, why don't oh. you have two clickers on there now? <laughs> I, I, have, I have four clickers, all the same. Wow. And I could just be clicking all over the place. Yeah, so is technology not progressed, or it hasn't hit Peterborough yet, the, the, the silent clickers? Well, I don't know. I think it's just the weather system we have. Yeah. Like, I've seen other people, uh, like on like the Weather Network, work mm -hmm. or on CBC. They've got these nice little handheld. Yeah, yeah, hand totally. Players. I'm getting screwed, buddy. Yeah, you are. I'm well, getting, someday. I'm getting screwed. Someday you'll make the big leagues. No. No, I know. No, I'm you don't going. want to make Yeah. I'm never going <laughs> to the good. big leagues. Yeah. I like it here in Peterborough. Okay. All right. Well, uh, oh, I wanted to plug one more thing. Sorry to yell. Cancer Society. Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, they're trying to break a Guinness Book of World Records. It's yes. happening May 16th at the airport. Peterborough, get behind this. So by May 1st, they need 220 people to register to shave their head. And a Guinness Book of World uh, representative is coming to Peterborough, wow. if we hit that number. I knew I Eileen Kimmon, who's here, has signed up already. Her, her son signed up. Matt Pfeiffer is here from the Canadian Cancer Society. So we're, we're getting the numbers, but we got to hit that 220 by May 1st. So, so Mike Judson, are you in? Uh, to to <laughs> shave my head? Yeah. But you know, I have this uh, this like daytime soap opera hair. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's in my contract. I actually I brought this up to uh, my work, and uh, it's in my contract. I'm not allowed to shave my head. You're kidding. Yeah, and I'm not allowed to have a big bushy beard either. You're kidding. You're not allowed to shave your head? No. This isn't a joke? No. Okay. Not even for a great cause? <laughs> not even for a great... Okay. Especially, especially okay. not for a great cause. Especially not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'll, Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll work on but yeah, anyway. that. What if I bring my cat? We shave my cat's head. Does that count? Uh, animals? Do they count, Matt? No animals. 
That is, we I, might ha- we might have to open it up. My cat is <laughs> my cat is an idiot. I'd love to shave her head, shave her head. Yeah, and but, your dogs and my dogs yeah. too. The, All right, well I could bring Tommy shave his head. Tommy, yeah, and he Jen. doesn't have any hair yet, does he? Yeah, he's well, got he's a little got, uh, full hawk going. He's got lots of hair. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, he's anyway. got the Judson full head of hair. Yeah. You're lucky, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about my hair another episode. Oh, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, okay. Neil's not shaving his head. He's, no, no, he I'm good. I'm good. There. Yeah. Otherwise, it may not. Come yeah, out. Matt said I don't have enough, so we're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that is uh, segment one, and uh, we've got the wonderful Kami Kami Kapu. Okay, we're we're gonna let her say it for real. All right. Peace, and coming up after this. Thanks. PTBO Canada Live is shot in front of a live audience every single Sunday at 3 p.m. at Riley's in downtown Peterborough on George Street. The great thing about Riley's is that my baby went there after having a pretty tough day and tried to sit down at the bar and have two fingers of scotch. Well, Riley's understands that you can't serve the minors, so my baby was turned away. But another great thing about Riley's is every time when you come down to watch the podcast live every Sunday at 3 p.m., they've got cheap beers on. If there's a football game going, then they're going to have cheap wings as well as cheap nachos. It's a great ambiance with a great, great staff and a bunch of great people and a great owner named Jim. He told the Sebastian Box story in episode two. You should check that out as well. Welcome back. Episode 16 of PTBO Canada Live. Joining me now is a, um, I was going to say a woman about town, but you know what? <laughs> you are, uh, you really are. I mean, I, I see it's you, true. I see you everywhere and not just during the day. I see you out at, at night too, having a good time once in a while. Yes. Yeah, do uh, you enjoy going out at night? <laughs> you, cer- you certainly keep it more civil than I do though, I think. Oh, wow. Well, I well, try. I don't, I don't know for real though, but uh, Ke- Kemia Kapo joining us now. Yes, you, uh, you got my name right. Thank I know. You. <laughs> I, you know why your name is so easy to get right and I can't believe people get it wrong is that it has great alliteration like just the sounds the hard K's mm-hmm. Kemi Acapo like, perfect how do you get it wrong I, but you also have know. four middle names and I'm not it's even going to go into those no <laughs> but you were telling me a cool story is that yes. um, four middle names um, you, you get them through family right yes that's true so how does that work again so um, in my family I don't know if this is a Yoruba tradition or whether this is just my family's tradition but um, each of my each set of my grandparents provided one name yeah and then each of my one of my my dad and my mom also also provided a name as well. Wow. Um, and then I think they all sort of decide on one general name that they're going to call me. So yeah, I have four middle names and one main name. I, I love the idea that yeah. the grandparents get to have input. Like, yeah. you, you made me so you can have at least one name on the yeah. kid. That's well, really yeah, well, cool. yeah, and it's like a, uh, what's that quote? Um, it takes like a village to raise a kid. Right. Um, so it takes a family to raise one person. You know, it wasn't just my parents growing up. My grandparents were around and they helped out uh, for my three brothers and myself as well. So Now, um, yeah. you were you were born in Africa, but I, I, I can't remember which country because you lived all over West Africa, that's, right? That's true, I did. I was born in Nigeria. In, in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, I lived there for about a year before I started moving around all over West Africa. Well, which so. other countries did you live in there? Um, so I lived in Benin, mm-hmm. Togo, um, Burkina Faso. That's the landlocked one, right? Bur- uh, no, Burkina cu- Faso is a landlocked one, There's yes. a couple of... Uh, I yeah. couldn't imagine being in a landlocked... Uh, <laughs> really? Kind of, well, I guess oh. <laughs> Ontario without the Great Lakes. That's true, yeah. I guess if be. you grew up here your whole life, it, it'd be weird to not have access to... Yeah. To, yeah, I some I sort of exit. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. and then a few more as well. Yeah, right? so Guinea Conakry, and then I did a bit of a stint in Ghana as well as um, Senegal. Yeah, I've been around. Was that just like... Yeah. Um, was this all during your youth? Yes. So this is between the time I was zero to 16. Wow. Um, So my dad worked for this bank called Echo Bank. um, And part of his job was to move around to different branches. um, And they were all set up all over West Africa. Yeah. Um, And he, his job was to like, sort of like set them up, get them going, make sure that they were viable and then move on to the next one. So. So uh, are you one of those kids that was like the moving around kid, never got to settle, never had like friends all the time because you were always, (laughs) you always hear about the kids who were like military kids, right? right it's kind of the right. same thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm, uh, I call myself a third culture kid. That's the name of the, I don't know, that's why people call kids like myself who move around a lot. Okay. Um, and yeah, I definitely am a third culture kid. I, um, you know, I have my parents' culture and then I have the culture of all the countries that I went to and then I've made this third culture, which is my own culture, which is a mix of both. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, no, I, I had friends. I was, I wouldn't say I was popular, but I had friends wherever I went. I usually had one or two good friends and then kind of just knew everybody else. Now, now that you're you're older and you're you're, you're mm-hmm. kind of staying here in Peterborough, do, do yes. you still have like issues with like attachment issues, like where like you, you're not going to pour yourself too much because you never know where you're going to end up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely do. I, I'm letting go of that slowly, but um, 
when I came here as a university student, um, I would meet international students that were here for a one-year exchange. So, you know, you become really good friends with them and then they're gone and you never know when you're going to see them again. So even as an undergrad student, I was I was still pretty reluctant to close really to to create really close bonds and ties with people because I knew at the end of my four years I was going to have to say goodbye to them or end of one year. So, yeah. But the longer I'm here, the more I'm developing a community and the less sort of afraid I am to create those bonds because sometimes, yes, you have to say goodbye to people, but you shouldn't miss out on what you potentially could have with them because you have to say goodbye. Well, you've, so. in terms of building a community here, mm-hmm. you have um, you have really cemented yourself in this community <laughs> in, a, in an incredibly positive way. Well, thank you. Um, um, uh, not, not only, I mean, you've worked at uh, administrative services at Trent and uh, yes. also with orienteering kids and mm-hmm. um, uh, especially exchange students or international students as mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah. You aligned yourself with the Red P- uh, Pashmina campaign. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and you're still with them and the walk's coming up soon, right? Um, yes. And I'm also with the YWC as well oh, yes. and the New Canadian Centre. So I, w- I yeah. still had those. I was, I was working towards <laughs> Oh, sorry. Towards I, my bad. <laughs> yes, but yes, the Red Pashmina walk is coming up soon. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. um, but but are you still a student at Trent as well? No, I graduated in 2009, so 2009. I haven't been a student at Trent for a while. So you've you've yeah. been here by my estimations for quite some time. Yes, like going it'll on. be it'll be 10 years in August. Wow. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> it's it's like almost like Peterborough's home. It seems like this could be mm-hmm. one of the places that you've stayed at the longest in your life. It uh, coming, yeah, August. The longest I stayed in one place for a amount of time was nine years. But even with then, I moved and then moved back and then moved and moved back. So, yeah, Peterborough is the place I've stayed at the most consistently for, which is kind of re- crazy <laughs> to think about. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what makes you want to stay here? Is it just because you went to school and you developed all those friends and contacts? Yeah. Definitely. Um, well, obviously, university was a big draw for me staying here. Um, initially, when I graduated, I was going to move, you know, go to Toronto, go to Montreal. Montreal, I was favoring Montreal because I spoke French and my family lives in that area as well. Um, but then I was lucky enough to get a job at Trent University um, and it was full time. It was a contract. but And then I said, OK, at the end of my contract, I'll leave. And then I got another contract and another contract. And then, you know, three years later, I got a permanent position with benefits. And I was like, wow, well, I guess I'm going to stick around for a little bit. Yeah. And then I had this amazing opportunity to work at the new Canadian Center. So I just have been lucky enough to get employment in Peterborough and um, and not just any kind of employment, employment that I really like and that really sustains me and that I really enjoy doing. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, anyone can find work, but it, it, it's not going to last unless you're passionate about what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're, you're lucky to find that. I, I am at my age and in Peterborough. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> you're set. Now, um, <laughs> you, you, your folks live in Montreal? Uh, yeah, well, they live in Laval, but yeah, yeah Laval. Montreal. Uh, brothers, sisters? Uh, two brothers live in Laval as well. Yeah. And I've got my oldest brother lives in Boston. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. Yeah. You ever go down and visit him? <laughs> yes, I do. I've been down three or four times to visit him. I love Boston, so. You, can it's... you do a Boston accent? Oh, gosh, no. No? <laughs> No, I'm terrible. They, they are funny to listen to. Yes, I do enjoy the Bostonian accent, but no. <laughs> I can eat chowder. That's about as Boston as I get. So um, did they move to Montreal after you moved to Peterborough? Yes. So I moved to Peterborough in 05, and my parents moved to Laval in 2008. Okay. So um, I'd been here two, five, six, seven. Yeah, <laughs> about three years. Um, and then they moved here and stuck around so it's it yeah. seems like to me just um by kind of serving like everything that you're doing you kind mm-hmm. of have this life mandate to help people and and yes. i think it's your parents that instilled this in you right oh definitely how did that how did that begin um it was really from watching my parents as a, at a young age like growing up um in my house that i had in burkina faso we had uh like five or six mango trees and each year they would produce like bountiful numbers of mangoes and too much for my family to consume so my mom would pick the mangoes she'd go to the market and buy a bunch of other fruit and then just give them out to you know friends uh, other members of her family people like um, our, the staff that worked with us at our house so just like growing up watching her do that and watching my dad do his philanthropy as well it mm. just to me, it wasn't like, oh, they're giving back. It was just like, this is what this is what humans do, right? Like, if you have too much, you you share it with the people that are around you. So, um, I guess I just kind of picked that up from them and started to do that 
myself. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they worked with the homeless as well. That's something that's kind of mm-hmm. important with me. I've done a lot of work with the homeless in Peterborough mm-hmm. and uh, also out in Nova Scotia. It started in this weird thing where I was living in this town of 5,000 people in Nova Scotia and then I went home to visit the, uh, my family in Toronto mm-hmm. and I started noticing all these homeless people everywhere and I was mm-hmm. like, there's got to be homeless people in this town in Nova Scotia, but where are they? And I mm-hmm. found out that a lot of it is couch surfing and people living in the woods. Mm-hmm. So um, I put together this little thing to help them. So um, how, like, what is your parents' affinity with the homeless? Um, well, both my parents grew up, um, not necessarily, well, I guess poor by Canadian standards, but they weren't, like, well off. I mean, they had food every night kind of thing, but they weren't super wealthy. Um, So I I think it comes from a place of, like, lived experience, right? Where it's, like, um, their their experiences growing up as well as noticing the people around them. In uh, in West Africa, I, it's it's almost impossible to notice homeless people because they're literally right there on the street as you're walking to work or whatever. So it, they're not as hidden and invisible as they are here in in Canada. Um, so it's it's almost I don't know. It's impossible to walk by and not notice it. Right. So to not do anything about it is. I don't know. To them, it was almost like, how can you not do something about it? It's um, it's so. weird here too because it's not invisible. There are um, maybe not necessarily homeless, but certainly panhandlers and people are Definitely. on the street that need help. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people just walk right by. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I mean, a lot of that has to do. I mean, I think there's a, a number of reasons why people walk by. I mean, a lot of it is is shame because they feel like. I can't. They feel ashamed that they can't help whoever is asking for help. Um, a lot of it is prejudice. A lot of people are prejudiced and say, "Oh, well, why don't you just get a job? You're just going to take that money and buy alcohol." And it's like you don't know the story of that person, um, so don't judge them. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of prejudice. There's a lot of shame, and you know, I, I, and then a lot of people don't give money for different reasons. Um, you know, they'd rather give to an organization that helps the homeless as opposed to giving the money direct directly, right. which. You know, people have their reasons. It's so. it's cloudy, and uh, yeah. that, that's fine. And some people go and buy, will buy a sandwich or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah. Buy them a shawarma. And they, there you go. Yeah, the Speakeasy has a great program. I forget what it's called, a sus- suspended meal. Okay. So if you go and, you know, eat lunch or breakfast there, you can, you know, give a little bit extra and say, you know, give this money towards a suspended meal. And then a panhandler or somebody could walk in and say, I'm here for one suspended meal, which is already paid for. So they just give the food to that person. I had person. no idea that they did Yeah. That. Yeah. It's, I found out about it about a year ago, I think, or a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if other places in town do it, but definitely the Speakeasy does that. Well, that's so. really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you get involved with the new Canadian Center? Was that through Michael Vanden Herberg? Uh, it was not. No, I, I heard about the NCC uh, in the Arthur, actually, which is Trent University's paper. Right. Um, they put an advertisement uh, for volunteers. And this was in my third year, um, which is kind of weird because you think as an international student, I would have heard about the NCC <laughs> in my first year, but it, somehow it escaped me. Um, and I said, oh, this is a wonderful organization. I'm an immigrant. They serve immigrants and newcomers. I want, I want to help in whichever way I can. So I applied to be a volunteer, and I was a volunteer here for about a year and a bit um, before I uh, started working there. So. Now, what what mm-hmm. kind of um, uh, hurdles as an immigrant or, mm-hmm. um, or as current immigrants are, are, would you be facing moving to Peterborough? Oh my gosh. I mean, well, it kind of depends on where you're moving from, I find. Okay. For, I'll, I'll talk about my own experiences just because that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one thing that was kind of weird, which for me was um, learning... <laughs> how to drive in Canada, oh. which is, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of similar across the board. Like a red light means stop, you know, a green light means go. But in Burkina, especially a red light is like stop. But like if there's nobody around, just people go. just go. Right. Yeah. So for me, I remember one night I was driving back with my friend from Ottawa and we stopped at this red light and I was like, why don't you just go? And she's like, it's a red light. I'm like, yeah, but no one's around. She's like, but it's a red light. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, okay, whatever. Um, And another thing for me is like the exits that are numbered here in Canada. That's not a thing back at home. No. So, you know, if you're asking for directions, it's like, oh, turn right at the big tree with, you know, (laughs) the somebody stabbed, you know, with a knife or whatever. And so that's how you tell directions. So for me, like driving to Toronto and Google map is like, take exit 49. I'm like, Which one's exit 49? I have no (laughs) idea how to do that. And that's like a very simple thing, right? Yeah. Um, But for a lot of immigrants, it's just like little things like that 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 prove to be difficult. It's not necessarily... 
um, dealing with culture and stuff. It's like I would um, find the most mm-hmm. aggravating thing like getting a license. A driver's license, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. While well, back at home, I I could pay for my license and not have actually taken any lessons. Oh wow! <laughs> I just kind of here you go and slip a wee. twenty and yeah. Uh, <laughs> but here, no, you got to go through the process, get your G one, your G two. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, it's. I understand why, like, and it's a good process. I'm definitely not saying that's bad, but yeah. Um, it, you know, it takes a while to do. And if you don't have a car, which I don't have a car, it's like almost impossible to to learn how to drive without access to a car. So I had to take young, dri- young drivers, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but even after getting my G2, I, I still didn't have a car to practice. So before I took my G, I was just like, fingers Ooh. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and I passed, thankfully. So, yeah. <laughs> That's all. And now you're driving around everywhere and you're... you're... No, I still don't have a car, but no. I, I do rent cars. So, yes, every once in a while I'll drive somewhere. Yeah, if you need so. to get down to Toronto real quick, mm-hmm. in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate... I was just driving in Toronto yesterday and yeah. my blood boils everywhere because oh, yeah. I, I like to follow the rules. I feel like if you mm-hmm. follow the rules and stay with the flow of traffic, everything mm-hmm. will be fine. And, yeah. and there's always people that ruin it and I just get upset. Yeah. That's I, uh, I'm an, I'm not necessarily a nervous driver, but because I'm n- a new driver, I'm still like, yeah, you know, if the speed limit's 80, I'm going 80. I'm that person that goes the speed limit. Yeah. And then there's a caravan behind me and people are like, what the heck? But I've never driven on the 401. I'm too, I've, I've only ever driven to Ottawa on Highway 7. So I haven't forayed on the 401 yet. I'm kind of <laughs> scared. <laughs> <laughs> so are you still with the new Canadian Centre? Yes, I am. Uh, what are their numbers like? Are, are the numbers mm-hmm. growing in terms of... Yes. I'm not sure what the final numbers for this year is because we, we, our AGM is not till June, so we haven't done the final numbers yet. But last year we saw an increase of numbers of um, people that we served, and I expect the same will be this year, whether an increase or about the same number as last year. Um, but yeah, we're seeing an in- a growing number of newcomers to the area. Um, and that's like, we service like Peterborough and, and Northumberland and the Lakeshore as well. So we do have a pretty big catchment area, but we, yeah, there are a lot of newcomers in this area. That must be fun. Like someone new is here and they're like, ah, and you get to be like, all right, here we go. Yeah. No, right. it's, it's really neat. And I was lucky enough to have that at Trent University with the Trent International Program. But yeah, if you're coming here outside of an education, you know, educational institute, you don't have that support. So that's what the NCC does is we provide that support, newcomer support that a lot of people need. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think is really cool that you uh, that you do is Mm -hmm. uh, your show on uh, Trent Radio. Yes. So um, (laughs) I know you guys just came to an end of a season. Are you continuing through the summer? I will not be continuing to the summer I'm taking a break mm-hmm. um, I just it's a lot of work to do on a weekly basis as I'm sure you know yeah um, but no I'll be taking a break in the summer I may go back next year um, but I'm definitely gonna switch to a podcast which was my oh. which was my original idea in the first place but fantastic uh, yeah so then not through doing. Trent anymore then it'll be the your own it'll podcast. be my own thing but if I do go back to Trent radio I'll I'll maybe do it on a bi- bi-weekly basis as opposed to every week yeah mm-hmm. if, if you want Four advice on how to make like really bad mistakes <laughs> and yes. edit terribly and <laughs> I should come to you come to me okay I, I am the master <laughs> and uh, how to forget to turn your cameras on I oh, think that, no. I think that was episode 13 oh, uh, no. we both forgot to just turn on the cameras is the camera on now yeah I think they're recording I hope so yeah, no 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 no, no. We oh, it up again. whatever but um, your, your radio program kind of focused around um, things like social justice right um, or was it, it yeah. anything you felt like a- well the so the first bit of the show what I do is I do a little bit of news and I try to focus my news on non um are not popular news. So like I, you know, I don't report on what CBC is reporting on. Or if I do, I, I focus on like the one story that had like a one paragraph that attached to it that yeah. I think is really important that people know about. Just like you were talking about earlier, CBC letting go of 120 something people this past week mm-hmm. uh, and then dropping the Gian Gomeshi news on the same day. So I talked about that and I talked about why they hid the, this news and how over the past year, 1,200 people have been let go from the CBC and they're, you know, slowly cutting back. And so, yeah, I talk about things that the normal media doesn't focus on because I do think people need to know about these things. Yeah, and, and, But yeah. the CBC mm-hmm. took a hit uh, of $115 million, uh, of their budget cut back That's from, true, from yeah. Prime Minister Harper, from the government, yeah. who has yeah. been trying to shut down the CBC since mm-hmm. he's been in power. So yeah. they're, they're in really sticky situations. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not blaming them for cutting back. I mean, that's not really their, their fault, yeah. but it's definite, It's time for the Canadian people, I think, to, to stand up and say, no, CBC is something that we fought for, and we have it, and we, we want our money to go towards CBC. So... 
people need to speak up and talk to talk to their their representatives and somehow get the message to Harper that what the, what he's doing is not okay. It's eventually so. going to come down to having two news channels. I mean, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's National ridiculous. Post just bought everything for from, from uh, Sun Media. Did they? Like all of their prints. So wow. everything is going to be under one banner. And mm-hmm. um, of course, with all these media outlets comes um, thinking in terms of political exactly. uh, posturing. So, yep. Yep. And, uh, but even the CBC was accused of that in terms of being uh, very red and very liberal, too. Well, that's true. I'm okay with that, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're okay with that. Some people aren't. Uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not. Because the, the media should be as neutral as possible. Um, but when you have people owning... Um, or people in power with a lot of money that have a say in what gets, you know, printed and what doesn't, then, yeah, you have a problem because those people don't want a story to run. It's not going to run. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, actually, and this guy had done a documentary on the Koch brothers Mm -hmm. that was going to air, I think it was on Global, um, and it was going to air, and then it got shut down in the last minute. He's not allowed to talk about it. He's not allowed to... Global owns the right to it. Um, So, yeah, all because the Koch brothers... They're literally the, I think they're the richest people in the world. One of, one of the richest people, brothers in the world. So they have all this power and they're, they just shut them down. There's so. uh, there's these um, me to we things that happen. Yes. With, apparently they were being criticized in a, really? in a documentary as well. Okay. Um, a journalist was doing that. But the documentary was being put together by me to we and they mm-hmm. took everything she said and cut it so that she was saying something positive. And oh, she's wow. on record now saying that is not, That's what, I not said, what I said. Yeah. Completely taken out of context. But mm-hmm. um, do, do you feel like with the media, like the, there is just a lot of dastardly work going on and a lot of underhandedness? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Because I work I think, in the media. Yeah, right? and I was like, uh, it's awkward. Okay. Say what um, you want. I think so. I mean, I think it's really hard sometimes, too, to... It's not really the reporter's fault, I find, like the, the people, frontline people, because they're just taking instructions from above. And right. if they sort of want to do their own thing, they can do it maybe once. And then it's like, well, you know, thanks for coming. See you later. Here's your pink slip. Um, so I think it's... I do find media is does tend to be a little bit biased one way or the, or another and um it is just something as simple as like he, like different headlines that they post you yeah. know I'm not going to point out any specific media outlet in town but you know there's a couple of p- places that are just like as soon as you read the headline, you know exactly what slant they're putting on it. Right. Um, and it just, it, it really bothers me. Um, I'll tell you so. one thing, um, and, and this is just like off the record, total honesty. Uh, mm-hmm. I've worked in uh, major market newsrooms before where the, the slant is put on stories mm-hmm. uh, specifically. Yeah. And you're instructed to, or it's changed for you. Well, you got to sell papers, right? Right. So, um, yeah. With with checks, um, mm-hmm. I really don't feel like it's really that much. I, I find a lot of the, the reporting that goes into it, and mm-hmm. we have an assignment at very fair person just like take it okay. and then uh, and then they just kind of put together a story and right. you know here it is for mm-hmm. the most part but um yeah, the, the one thing that bothers me with news media sometimes is just our obsession with death and tragedy. It's yes. like, but yeah. but you know what? As soon as you don't run any, if you miss a death and tragedy story, mm-hmm. you get a hundred phone calls saying, right. where's that death and tragedy? Right, yeah. I, I need to feel awful today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's the glorification of it as well, as well as the intense focus on it, especially, you know, if it was like, how the person died or or under what circumstances and depending on who is involved you know the story gets so like overblown and it's talked about for weeks and you know something else happens and it gets no attention because everyone wants to know about this one person that got shot Um, which like obviously you should report on that but like when you over sensationalize one thing then people become focused on that they lose focus on everything else Um, and then that one thing gets blown into proportion that it shouldn't have you know if you if you think about it in a bigger i'm I'm talking about terrorism yeah that's what i'm talking about um it's like if you look if you actually look at the stats and the numbers it's like canada's focusing so much on this like one little thing that if you think about all the other incidents put together like terrorism in canada really is a very minuscule problem very so um you know and the introduction of bills bill c51 is just you know, just another thing that, and now people are really focused on that, which I think is good. But at the same time, there's, you know, let's talk about the 
plus 1,200 missing and murdered Aboriginal women in Canada. Like, nobody's talking about that. Well, and, you know, so. and they're completely being shut down and ignored by the government, which, oh, is, yeah. which is truly appalling. Mm-hmm. And um, But with... Um, it, with the Bill C- C-51, mm-hmm. I was just where I was driving around with my friend. I'm like, yeah, this Bill C-51. I'm like, man, we should really read that whole thing, eh? <laughs> it's like, it's humongous. It's, he, I tried reading it, and it's, oh my gosh, it's not an easy read. No. Uh, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they use all this jargon to, they do. to confuse the layman. So mm-hmm. they're like, ah, I'm not reading this. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. scared of terrorists, so I'm going to vote for Stephen Harper, and then uh, we'll, we'll kill all the terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but that actually is kind of what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. It's a uh, fear monger. Mm-hmm. Uh, the population be like, well, who's going to kill the terrorist? That guy. Okay. I'm- yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote for him. It's. I was watching. Uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say. It. say I was watching uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. Yes. And he interviewed uh, what's his name, Edward Snowden. I watched that as um, well. Yeah, and I think. Th- Maybe that's what we need to do. We need to introduce Bill C-51 in a way that people will understand it on a very basic level, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and what he did was, well, I'm not going to repeat what he did, but <laughs> he, he brought it down to a way where, like, the basic average person was like, oh, my God, the government's able to do that? They're, they're able to look into my emails? And they're like, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> but so maybe if we took Bill, C- Bill C-51 and made it very, very late, lay man words. Yeah, People yeah. would get interested. And yeah. and yeah, there's a child over there, but we are talking about dick pics. So anyways, um, <laughs> but but is was that not I'm ridiculous 12. that they're like, that <laughs> yeah. was what made that them was what, yeah. that they can see these pictures? Yeah. He's like, well, I sent one to my girlfriend last week. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I sent one earlier today. <laughs> yeah, I've got like five on my phone right now. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that that is what needs to happen. Maybe mm-hmm. a guy like Rick Mercer is the type of person to break mm-hmm. it down. And I think, yeah, I, I yeah. hopefully he's trusted yeah people and, trust and he works for the for the public broadcaster and uh, mm-hmm. you think they'd be the ones to stick it to him anyways that's true but we should, um, maybe I'll send him an email I don't know it worries me just because you can see the the steps moving forward with like a police state in the US everything mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. being covered in that regard by mm-hmm. any media but I, I'm afraid of something like that happening here in Canada and it looks like it probably will yeah uh, the more the more I look at it and the more co- conversations I have with people yeah the more I'm realizing Peter, uh, not Peter, but Canada is becoming more and more like the U.S. in a, a lot of negative ways, ways that I'm not a fan of. Um, and I definitely think there's, we need to say no now before it becomes too late, before we can we can actually make change. Because it's it's easier to stop something before it, it gets going. It's much harder to to like sort of take it back once it's already happened. So right, yeah. And so uh, yeah, we need someone to uh, disseminate. Bill C fifty one for me, so I can understand <laughs> what exactly. I'll is call Rick Mercer. I've got his number. No, yeah, I don't. No, I think we used to at the at the, at the office. Maybe I'm I do sure. know someone who works for him. So I, I bet did. you, I bet you, it's already hashed out. It's already prepared, and right, they're waiting, they're till waiting. Clo- waiting till closer to election time. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe that's smart. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, I, that, would be that would be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, now you're also with the with the YWCA. You still yes. and uh, Walk a Mile's coming up. Are you a volunteer? Sure is. Them? Yes, I am. Um, I have been with the Y ooh, three, four years now. One year as a volunteer and then three years on the board, I think. Um, but yeah, Walk a Mile is coming up May 31st. Or is it May 30th? It's May, May 31st. I, I can't Friday? remember. It's a Friday. Yeah, it's coming up. Check. No, no, no. Look at it's, it. It's a Friday. I, <laughs> I, sw- should know I sweat through the yeah. back of my shirt every time. <laughs> and I don't but really it's care. A, well, okay, why do you walk? Okay, I guess this, I'm not interviewing you. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's a, it's a fair but, question. Um it's a, it's a tough question for me because mm-hmm. uh, the reason why I walk, unfortunately, because of the circumstances surrounding it and surrounding mm-hmm. the person mm-hmm. and, and how these things usually work, mm-hmm. is that I, I can't talk about it because she doesn't want to talk about it and wouldn't want me to do that. You know right. what I mean? Um, okay. There were, th- there's been several things that have happened, but um, the reason why I walk now is because someone very close to me was affected mm-hmm. um, violently as well. And... Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, I wanted to just kill this person. And, right. um, you know, we went to the police and she didn't want to be known as the, the girl, right? Right, right. And so, um, you know, I talked to, to Lynn about that and mm-hmm. uh, Lynn Zimmer, the. Yeah, uh, yep, well, I'm just saying for all that, not for oh, you. Sorry. definitely know who I'm talking <laughs> I like, about. I know who Lynn is. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, um, and also because I do believe in equality, I, I don't mm. be- believe in any gender having any. Uh, 
like really advantage over the other, except mm-hmm. for your advantage to, to give birth to children. But maybe I'll be able to have that one day. <laughs> maybe. That would be great, I think. It's way cooler than like the thing we can do, <laughs> which is not very Not cool. much. Not, not much at all. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, I think it's a great day. And um, mm-hmm. it's it's really good to, to talk to other men about that and kind of break down their machismo. You know? Yes. Yeah. One reason I really like Walk a Mile is because it invites men into the conversation, uh, which, uh, which admittedly, it sometimes men feel un- afraid to join because it's like, oh, this isn't my thing. This isn't my place. Um, but yeah, it invites men to come into the conversation, have a conversation, but you know, amongst each other with their, with their kids, you know, their friends, you know, their parents, whoever, um, and you know, literally walk a mile in in heels yeah. which is the I know, worst is the, I wore heels for like I think it was four hours yesterday and I was like why am I doing this to well, myself don't ever do it <laughs> I, I don't, why do you do it though well I don't know I, I like the way it I, mean, I like the way I look in heels. What, <laughs> I'm not gonna what, lie. What, what, what uh, is it that you like about yourself that looks good in heels? <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> I just think I look good. Because mine, mine does not get any, any. Mine is not improved when I put on heels. No. <laughs> no, it looks worse. No, it actually. If the heels are comfortable, I have several pairs of like heels that are very comfortable. There's no way. There's oh no. no, there are. No, you, but you like your to... feet are being jammed forward into something. It you gotta. You just gotta find the right pair. Oh. Like, I have, like, four or five heels that I, like, I can walk in for, like, three days straight, won't even notice that I'm wearing heels. And then there's heels that are, like, more pizzazz that I'm like, oh, I really like them, but this, like, it just really hurts. (laughs) (laughs) So I stopped wearing those, but, yeah. Um, But anyways, yeah, walk a mile, I think, is great. Um, And, yeah, I'll be volunteering on the day of, so I don't know what I'll be doing. Uh, hanging out at t-shirts maybe or, or pizza at the end so yeah mm-hmm. so what's coming up for you in the future do you have plans or are you just kind of like riding it out and just testing mm-hmm. the waters everywhere you go I uh, I think I'm gonna take it easy for a little bit and not say yes to anything new um, <laughs> you, you won't be able to do it <laughs> I well I think I will be at least for the summer yeah and then come the fall I'll, I'll get itchy again and want to start doing something new but I'm gonna continue with my podcast probably with my radio show as well I'm also doing this photo project called um, People yes. with Peterborough as well. And uh, we, we've posted some of that on uh, mm-hmm. PTBO Canada yes, as well. Yes, thank you for that. So yeah. who's who's shooting it? So currently all the photos that are posted are Chance Faulkner's photos. Right. But I'm also participating in that. I've taken a few photos and sent them off to him and he's going to do the editing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is an idea that him and I sort of came up with in, was it last summer? He came up to me at the Silver Bean and said, hey, I've got this really cool idea. And I was like, I've been thinking the same thing. Why don't we work together? So That's really cool. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's essentially just randomly profiling random people. Well, not necessarily all random, but like mm-hmm. some random people that you might even see around uh, Peterborough. Um, oh, I, I was thinking of something. It's not related, though. But either okay. way, but uh, the, the pictures are fantastic. <laughs> yes, he is. A, he's a wonderful photographer and editor. I don't like my photos in comparison. To, like, it'll be very easy to tell yeah. who took which photos when my go up, <laughs> unfortunately. But no, he's wonderful. I really like him. So but yeah, what we try to do is focus on sort of like the everyday people of Peterborough, um, especially the people that you might walk by without noticing or you will, you try to avoid noticing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, no, they're, they're human too. They live in Peterborough. They are a part of your community and learn a little bit about them because I'm a firm believer that the more you learn about someone's story, the more you see their humanity. And the more you see someone's humanity, the less you are inclined to not help them or the less you're inclined to to put in place laws or or um, structures that will be barriers to them mm-hmm. um it's really easy to be like ah oh, there's 1200 homeless people in peterborough but if you know the name of each homeless person and their story it's a lot more difficult to be like oh i can't you know i'm not gonna help the homeless because it's like i know i know these people so yeah and mm-hmm. um and that's what i always tell people is um you know what if you're uncomfortable giving a homeless person money mm-hmm. or, or buying them a sandwich or whatever, mm-hmm. do yourself a favor and sit down and give them five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five or ten minutes. Yeah. And just talk to them. And it will change your life and change your perception mm-hmm. on, on homeless people. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love that you're doing that. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, mm-hmm. um, you know what? We, we've run about half an hour here. Okay. Um, how long wow. Do you, that how was long, quick. How long do your interviews go? <laughs> They're typically about an hour. So, you know. Oh, yeah. You'll well, get there someday. <laughs> I'll get there someday. What do you mean? I just, technically I've done 50 minutes, just half an hour with you. 
But um, either way, um, are you going to have me on your show then? Yes. Um, that will come up very soon. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want me, just no, I send do an email want, to Neil. Uh, He'll break it I like me. my hope, which is kind of ridiculous, is eventually to have everyone in Peterborough interviewed. But yeah. that's pretty unrealistic, I think. But I'm going to try and get as many people as possible on my um, show. So. I, I, I think I'm beating you right now. What do you mean? In terms of, because I'm of trying numbers? to do the same thing. Oh, yeah. okay. So is this a competition? Yeah. All right. I've got about... You're on. Yeah. 15 now. 16 now oh, on this podcast. Oh, I have podcast. 20, so... Oh, it's okay. I, yeah. I do the checks daily. We do three interviews. <laughs> okay. You know what? But that's your day job. I, this is like a side gig for I've me, I've got right? like a thousand <laughs> interviews under my belt. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No. The, the, the thing is with you is that you're you're smarter and more eloquent and, and better spoken than I am. Uh, so I your, your interviews are more you. interesting. I've heard your interviews with, uh, with Neil. <laughs> with and, Neil, uh, yeah. Michelle Ferrari, I was yes. uh, I caught yeah. that one as well. Oh, thank you. So yeah. it's um and I love Trend Radio because yes. they play Frank Zappa. They play <laughs> weird music. Yes, that's I love Trend Radio for that reason too. That's why I can't yeah. listen to any other station because <laughs> yeah, I don't I can't tell is this a different artist after that one that right, just played? Or right, am I listening yeah. to a full album? They all kind of sound sucks. the same after a while. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. uh very cool. And speaking mm. of uh of bands that don't suck. Yes, Television Road. Television Road is here and we're gonna have them coming up after the break. But I want to thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for and, having um, me. When does your podcast start? I haven't set a date yet, but I'm thinking mid-summer, early fall. All right, cool. So, yeah. Right, I look forward to it. Thank you. All right, take care. <laughs> Cami Acabo, everyone. <laughs> Television Row coming up after the break. <laughs> TBO Canada Live is brought to you by Ben Van Veen Realty. Ben Van Veen is a swell guy. He works with Century 21. He's been doing a great job in the region. The reason why is because he's got some pretty unique services. Number one, he will send contractors to your home to get it market ready and then you don't pay for those contractors until he sells your home. That's yeah, a pretty sweet deal. Number two is that if you list with him, he will give you 1,000 air miles up front. And then if you mention the podcast, he will give you 2,000 air miles. We like the way you think, Ben. And then on top of all of this, one of the greatest things that he does is he will actually create a website for your listings. So you're not cluttered in with all those other homes online. No, your house, your listing gets its very own website, and I'm sure that's going to help it sell a little bit better. So if you want to check out Ben's services, you can go to benvanveen.realtor. That is his website. And I guess the question, the last question everyone has is, how does he do it? Well, his name is Ben Van Veen. That's how he does it. He's got a great name. Let's go back to the podcast. Welcome back to episode 16 of PTBO Canada Live. Joining me now is Television Road. And uh, what are all of your wonderful names? Uh, I'm Sarah. This is Duncan on guitar, Dan Collins on the melodica, and Dan McNally on the drums. All right. How long have you guys been together now? Uh, about a year and a half. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, how, you guys have obviously been playing music longer than that. Yeah, well, there's been a sort of three eras of uh, this lineup. Um, Dan, Dan, and our bassist who is not here today, Jay, uh, had a first band called Winghorns, and they had a. They also had a singer named Sarah. Yeah. So that was the first uh, inkling. Then there was a second, Television Road. Um, that was more pop, and they had another Sarah, um, but it was very like indie pop. Oh, Sonia, where was the th okay? And then, and then a Sarah. And a Sarah. So Sonia, then a Sarah, then a Sarah. Now. And then yeah, me and Duncan joined the band uh, October 2013, and now we're considering that Television Road. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> where does the name come from? Where, where where does the name Television Road come from? Uh, so Dan Collins and our bassist Jay uh, were just like riding in a car down the street, saw the sign, Television Road. Oh, that'd make a good band name. It's a road in Peterborough. <laughs> it's a road in Peterborough. <laughs> and you know, anyone else uh, anywhere around the world looking at that band name would have no idea. But would, if you live yeah. in Peterborough, you, then that's, that's a cool idea. Yeah, and it also, we like it too because you kind of can't tell what genre the music would be just by the name. Now, you, know, you guys you are hear... multi-genre in terms of what you play as well, yeah. which keeps it really interesting as opposed to just kind of sticking with one sound and rolling through an album. You yeah. guys uh, are, are, are a little all over the place with the kind of music <laughs> you play. Not all over the place in the bad way, but in a good way. Yeah. And, um, you know, you like to jam out a little bit. T tell us a little bit about your sound. Yeah, uh, we definitely like to experiment with the, the genres. We all sort of listen to, like, everything, jazz, folk, um, <laughs> hip hop, classic rock, punk, ska, 
uh, Lady Gaga, that's me, yeah. no, no one else. Uh, <laughs> but so that's sort of like what we all like Radiohead. So I guess that's a pretty big influence and they like to experiment too a lot. Um, yeah. And we're definitely going to like we're recording a second album this summer and we're going to sort of stick with the whole, you know, experimenting with sounds. But it, it will be a little more uh, narrowed down, I guess, than. Our first album, Character Splatters. Yeah. yeah. And um, and you can listen to that where? Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Yeah. <laughs> so search Bandcamp uh, Television Road. You can listen to that. And uh, there's more music on there as well, right? I don't think it's uh, just Character Splatters. It's just Character Splatters Or right do you now. guys have a SoundCloud? Because I was Yeah, I was we do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's where I was like. So go on SoundCloud Television Road and you can find more music on there as well. Yeah. All right. You guys are really talented and uh, I'm excited to hear you guys play. So Thanks. let's. Uh, wh- what are we going to be playing? Uh, it's a song called Vision Hill. It's it's okay. actually a, a song based on folk tale about Peter Bro that we heard about uh, the Czechs Tower being built on a on a burial ground. Which is on television road. <laughs> on television road. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's great. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Um, all right. No, this is going to be awesome. And uh, I heard a couple bars of this before, so I'm excited which way it's going. So uh, take it away. Television Road. Let's do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. souls exist atop the hill to radio wave blitz broadcasting the screams of our ancestors past gives a whole new meaning to the stat feedback bodies rotting under roads paved black who do you love and what makes you kill broadcasting live Fans, bad neighbors, dream catchers, you'll never know the truth. Honestly, can we do better? Unfolding the same story forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Gives a whole new meaning to the stat feedback. Bodies rotting under roads made black. Who do you love and what makes you kill? Broadcasting live from Vision Hill. The smell of gold in the mist. Burial ground without peace. They'll put up some cash and sell you a seat. Gives a whole new meaning to the sad feedback. Bodies rotting under roads pay black. Who do you love and what makes you kill? Broadcasting live from Vision Hill. Spiritual waters are shallow The towers are tall, they say don't bother But you can, if you try Paving your way, paving your way Paving your way, paving your way Paving your way, paving your way Paving Paying your way at the 
place at the end of the rapids. Ah. And ever 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 and ever. Thank you very much. That's Television Road. Put your hands together. Thank and you, you guys so are much. playing in Toronto at the Silver Dollar. Yes, April 25th, this Saturday. This Saturday. So this will be out on Tuesday, so it's a couple of days where people can head down Yay. there. Go check them out in Toronto, and uh, you can also check them out playing around Peterborough. Yep. And uh, follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Television R-O-A-D. R-O-A-D. Yeah. Road. Road. <laughs> Television Road. All right, and that's television spelled normally as well, right? Yeah. So totally just a norm. <laughs> and uh, can we follow you on Facebook? Yeah, that's television RD. RD. Okay, <laughs> now I understand the spelling. All right, give them a follow. That wraps it for uh, episode 16 of PTBO Canada Live. Thank you for joining us, and thanks to Kemi as well. And uh, stay tuned. We've got a fun one coming next week as well. Cheers.